Imagine you're planning a road trip. You have a map and you know your destination, but there are multiple routes you could take. Some routes are faster, some are scenic, and some might be closed due to construction. To make your journey smooth, you plan the route ahead of time, marking the best roads to take. This way, you avoid getting lost and ensure you reach your destination efficiently. In the world of networking, static IP routes work similarly. They help data packets find their way through a network, ensuring they reach the correct destination without unnecessary detours. In this first of a two-part episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll explain the basics of static routes. Next. Routers are great multitaskers. They can receive routing information from various sources simultaneously, including connected interfaces, static routes, or dynamic routing protocols. Static routes are manually configured with a predefined path to direct data traffic from one network to another. To do this, you specify the IP address of the destination network and the next hop. The destination IP address tells the router where the data is ultimately headed, while the next hop IP address indicates the next device in the path that will forward the packet closer to its final destination. This is unlike dynamic routing, where routes are automatically adjusted based on network conditions. One of the main advantages of static routes is their simplicity. In smaller networks, where the number of routes is limited, they can efficiently manage traffic without the complexity of dynamic routing protocols. For stable networks where the topology doesn't change frequently, static routes provide a reliable way to ensure data reaches its destination. Limiting the routes data can take lowers the risk of unauthorized access or data breaches. It provides predictability, which is important for applications that demand consistent performance. They can also serve as backup routes if primary dynamic routes fail, ensuring network redundancy and reliability. Static routes give complete control over the routing paths, enabling fine-tuned optimization of network traffic. Moreover, they reduce overhead because they do not require the constant communication and computation that dynamic routing protocols do. While static IP routes offer many benefits, they also come with limitations. Scalability can be an issue. In large dynamic networks, managing static routes can become cumbersome and lead to errors. They can be time consuming to maintain since they don't adapt. When there is a change in the network topology or if there's a failure, manual updates need to be done. If they aren't done quickly or properly, there will be problems in the network. By understanding when and how to use static routes, you can ensure efficient and reliable network performance. One static route that almost every network administrator sets up is a default route. A default route directs all traffic that doesn't match any other specific routes in the routing table to a designated next hop, typically a router that connects to the internet or another large network. This ensures that any data packets with unknown destinations can still be forwarded appropriately, providing a catch-all path for outbound traffic and ensuring basic network connectivity. To match any destination network address and subnet mask, 0.0.0.0 is used for both. There you have it, the basics of static routes. Click the link in the description for part two, where I'll show you how to configure them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.